Whenever? Yep. All right. So how many of you guys play extremely high rents in Boulder right now? Everyone, right? Are you tired of letting your uh, monthly rent go to waste? Do you want the opportunity to be able to uh, make money while being a homeowner at the same time? Well, Collective RE is your answer. So here we have the dream team. I'm Kellen Kopp, founder and CEO. I'm Connor Swanson, CEO. Hi, I'm Mark Chandler Lyle, CMO. And I'm Johnny Garfinkel, and I'm CTO. So what is Collective RE? Right now I'm gonna give you a basic rundown of who we are and what our company kind of entails. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking a line of credit from a private investor at what we're hoping to be 4.5% interest rate. Um, we're, we're, we know that we're gonna to have to somewhat negotiate with our private investors, so we're assuming that they're gonna come in at maybe 5%, so we said that 4.7 was a good middle ground. Um, so once we have this line of credit, we're gonna um, buy our properties outright, um, and then we will then sell these properties to our customers, which, was, which are students in uh, the form of divided interest. And the reason it is divided interest is because it allows um, our customers or the students to be able to sell their portion of the property without um, the rest of the house being sold. And the reason that it's also at 9%, which is uh, a little bit greater than what it usually is, is because we have to account for like the high risk profile of lending to college students and the multitude of borrowers that we will um, encounter. Um, and then in addition, Collective RE will be a premier property management service that um, will be able to, we, we hope to um, create unique customer relationships and um, be able to respond quickly to you know, any issues that occur. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Kellen. Oh, what? What just happened? Um, okay, so don't know why that's not showing up. Oh, there we go. Cool, so the so what factor. Um, so why use Collective RE versus just rents at a normal property? So we wanted to break this down into numbers so you guys could really get an idea of what you're losing versus what you're gaining. So when you're renting in a property on the hill, it's probably on average about $1,000 a month for rents. Uh, after three years, that's $36,000. Four years, that's $48,000. So that's all money just down the drain. And then on top of that, your security deposits. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have hardly ever seen any of my security deposits back. So that's pretty much lost money too a lot of the time. So after three or four years, that could be up to $56,000 that's just down the drain. Um, now, looking at our business model and how you can actually gain. Um, so you'd have to split the down payment. Um, so we kind of use some round numbers for estimates. On a million dollar property, a 15% down payment is 150,000. Split that six ways is 25,000 and then we charge a $5,000 sale fee up front. Um, so that's 30,000 in and then your monthly mortgage payment at 9% over four years with principal and interest would be 64,800 poured into the property. But um, this is actually where it becomes profitable. So we're really banking on the, uh, the market to continue to appreciate and in Colorado over the past three or four years, uh, housing or property values have appreciated about nine to 10 percent and it's even higher in Boulder, about 11 to 12 percent. So if the trends continue at 11 percent appreciation a year, uh, the property would be worth about 1.4 million. Um, if, the whole, if everyone in the house decided to sell, the profit would be 437,661. If you just wanted to do your portion, it'd be 72,943. And that's just profit back into your pocket. Gross profit. Um, so essentially, I mean, that's, that's a year and a half of school for an out-of-state student. So uh, looking at our revenue, um, like I said, we kind of used some round assumptions. So million dollar property values with a 15% down payment and six residents per property. Uh, we have three different revenue streams uh, that we're gonna be making money off of. The first is our primary interest revenue. So that's the 9% premium that we charge and then we would, uh, our line of credit that we would be borrowing would be at about four and a half to 5%. Um, property management revenue, we would just charge a monthly property management fee like most of you guys probably pay already. And then a sale fee per resident in a property. So that'd just be $5,000 flat per resident, um, which is kind of comparable to a security deposit. Um, looking at our revenue for the next five years, uh, so in our first year, we're going to start with just two properties that we manage, mainly just so that we can really nail down our, our logistics, our operations, and make sure that we're really smooth with how we run those before we try to grow fast. Um, next year we're going to expand to four, four different properties and then after that really get, get into aggressive growth and hopefully be up to about 35 properties 
by 2022. Um, we're profitable after by, by year two here, which uh, if our model stays consistent, and a lot of that's also dependent on the rate that we have to borrow on our line of credit from. But if, if all that remains consistent, we're profitable in year two, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so now kind of diving into how we're actually funded. Uh, equity financing isn't really in our best interest as a company. So we're keeping that pretty minimal. Uh, our first year, we're gonna try to raise about $240,000 of bootstrapped funds from friends, family, and other resources. Uh, that's gonna be used to cover our first year's losses and then other startup fees on top of that. And then after that, we're really gonna dive mainly into debt financing. So like we mentioned, we're borrowing on a line of credit from a private investor. Uh, at about four, four and a half to five percent, we put 4.7 just kind of for middle grounds, and we're borrowing as we need. So basically, the good thing about a line of credit is you only get charged interest on the money that you're actually borrowing. Uh, and we definitely don't plan on having any excess funds lying around. Yeah, and also what's cool about the line of credit, if um, you know we go out and buy a uh, property outright for a million dollars and then receive the down payment for, say, 15% at 150K, then we can immediately pay back our investor 15% uh, of that million dollar line of credit. Okay, so what if I want to or need to get out of my house? Um, you can buy, sell, or rent out on your own, but the coolest thing about our company um, Collective RE serves as a liquidity platform. So our website um, basically serves as an ask bid uh, spread to basically match students who are looking to buy divided interest in um, their houses and students who are looking to sell their divided interest. Um, like I said, you're welcome to, to, um, to rent it out or sell on, on your own, but our website's really cool because it provides the quickest and most efficient managed uh, channel. Um, in order to do so and it's cool um, if you just wanted to rent out your portion we'll find an actual tenant who would like to take over your property um, or your room so I'm sure you guys are all wondering what happens if the market turns down um, and houses depreciate well um, in, in a case for renting you're still gonna send your monthly payment out the door and you're never gonna get, get that back it's basically your cost of living um, month to month on an annual basis and with being a homeowner is the beauty of it is you get to benefit alongside the market uptrends and you get to hold on to the uh, property as our recommendation in a market downtrend. Sure you're welcome to sell the property at a depreciated value and you might uh, lose a little bit have a loss um, but if you hold it up till the market turns back then you're welcome to turn a profit and cash out when it does. Okay, so Connor put together um, just a pretty cool template of our website. It's a little um, too bright in here, but basically we've got um, buyers looking to sell and um, buyers looking to buy. And this is just a template of two potential properties that are currently for sale on the hill. Um, our first one on the left here is um, there's basically room for seven bedrooms and uh, a maximum of seven homeowners that we could split a mortgage for uh, at a $25,000 down payment each. Um, a monthly payment, principal plus interest, would be about twelve fifty per person. Um, for a smaller but more spread out house um, with a maximum homeowners of four, um, twenty nine thousand dollar example of a down payment would be equal to a fourteen fifty um, payment per month. Okay, so our marketing campaign is basically based off of social media, campus flyers. Um, a lot of um, advertising to freshmen and also word of mouth. So the coolest thing about social media is that we can target our customers directly and super cheap. Um, what's really cool, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, um, Twitter, you name it, it's pretty cheap and we can target um, our target com uh, customers directly. Um, something else that's cool is campus flyers and flyers on the hill. Um, we're already in our target market so if we hand out flyers um, to people to generate interest to uh, you know possibly present an investment opportunity where they can be a homeowner as well as um, serving their um, living accommodation as an investment vehicle to potentially make money um, I think that's really cool um, and our, the coolest thing about uh, flyers is that our only cost is the cost to produce them the cost to print um, specifically freshmen 
Um, I know, I don't know about you guys, but me as a freshman, I was trying to secure my sophomore living situation right away, and I wanted to find a whole bunch of buddies and pretty find out um, what I wanted to do for a living sophomore year. Um, so I think freshman orientation would be a really good route because freshmen are still re uh, getting into the thick of things for school, trying to plan things out, and um, a lot of parents will be there. So what's cool about that is, you know, if parents want to see a return on their students, um, living accommodations throughout school, then they might see the opportunity more so than their son or a daughter and um, want to buy in. And yeah. And lastly, um, we truly believe that a good product will sell itself. And if our customers believe in Collective RE and appreciate and benefit alongside our property management services, as well as our uh, brokerage and lender lending services, um, we believe that they'll go out and tell their friends and family and um, word of mouth will be a good marketing campaign that will be free. Thank you for your guys' time. Yes. What was your time? 30 over. 30 over. Okay, yeah. that's something to think about. Uh, before we get to take any questions, who at this point would invest in this company? I think that you've really started to focus your message uh, much better than I thought just bottom line your presentation flowed very well. Uh, beyond that, let's take some questions. Yeah, Rob. Um, so, I don't know if you guys mentioned this, but what kind of made you to uh, choose the 15% down payment? So, that was kind of based off some surveys. Um, we, in our last survey, we basically asked, you know, what people would be willing to, you know, pay for a down payment. Uh, it was between 25 and 30,000, right, Colin? Yeah. Yeah, between 25 and 30,000. and. If we did a 20% down payment, it would kind of be up and over that mark a little bit. So 15% is kind of the sweet spot getting it down. If you could consider 20, I probably would just because you would have right. to purchase mortgage insurance, but something about yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. we're actually thinking about having a structure that is um, tailored to our customers. So if they want to put less down and pay a little more interest over time, they're welcome to do that. If they have a little more disposable income willing to invest up front um, to minimize their payment at a lower interest rate, that's something that we're going to uh, include. Zach? Uh, yeah, I like what Brad said. I think you're going to have to pay for it. Um, I think you're going to have to pay for it. I think you're going to have to pay for it. I just have two comments. Um, first, I think the poll raise your hands if you feel this question at the beginning. I, I have sort of a strong aversion to that tactic. I think it's a little overused, and if you are going to use it, like it should be, you should be asking a question that then sort of ignites thought in the in the audience, and okay. then and then you give them a second to think about it. Not raise your hand if you are paying too much rent. Uh, we agree, and so do you wish you had a thing to do this? You know, and cool. then you just move right on to the next thing. It should be something that you like allow the. It, it didn't really catch me that much. Maybe you think like put the number in your head. Of, how much money uh, you're how losing. How much you're paying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a bit, like, we feel you're paying, that's a big number, and then you flow into it. So I, I, I think the raising the hands is a little overused. And then, cool. um, uh, but I think you're on the right track. And then on the one slide with, um, I think I might have commented on this last time, but the 11% increase in the housing market, I think you should be a little careful on how you word that assumption. Mm -hmm. um, because you're like, you, you said it, I think something along the lines of, this is assuming that the housing market um, continues to grow by 11%. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily buy into that. I think maybe if you word it on, because you guys are focusing on college towns, mm -hmm. so maybe you word it as assuming that the Boulder, I'll, I'll buy into the Boulder market is going to mm -hmm. continue to grow mm -hmm. at 11%, but I don't know if I buy into that. Yeah. Like the market as a whole, so, you mean? So if, okay. Yeah, exactly. So maybe if you focus it more in on the, these college campus towns are going to continue to grow or something. Because cool. that's a huge risk, I think, in, in mm -hmm. the whole model. So if you can focus it in on a college town, I think Short it, time. A little bit. it makes more sense in the audience. Model. I think Especially probably having a, a bullish and a bearish um, valuation of appreciation percent would be pretty good because even we right. even used like six to seven percent, and the number was still pretty number positive. Was still, yeah, right. yeah, close right. to fifty thousand. So, Grant. Uh, I just have two questions. One, can you walk through the seventy-two? Yeah. Profit so. Basically, 64800 per person, uh, that's times six. So that would be the total paid in. So this is, yeah, so over four years, principal and interest with all your payments, this is what your total would be. Um, multiply that times six, all the six people that live in there. Um, and then 
that came out to 400 something thousand. Um, and then the rest was the amount that you still owe on the mortgage. So that, that, those two together equaled a million. And then this, uh, this is the appreciation value. So the house appreciated the 1.437. So essentially if you sold the house at that amount, initially divide that divide that amount by six of what's left over and then this is your profit so for the final presentation you should have a go-to slide explaining exactly okay. what the question we is. yeah we actually had all the math on there initially but it was a lot was on numbers. the slide right. yeah. but so if you, but if you get asked the question then you can refer to it yeah. the the slide okay keep it simple through the presentation sure but say hey we thought this through and this is how we explain it okay and cool can you talk through like once you like acquire the money buy a house what that looks like between like when you get the money and somebody actually buys like are you buying a house and then holding it till you get enough tenants where it's all bought out or are you like getting a couple people yes to so there like, mm -hmm. rent or theoretically of there is um we have to account for uh, vacancy costs so if we buy a house outright um, theoretically we'd like to have you know customers in line um, students you know on the wait list saying yes we're, we're willing to buy into this property um, what's also kind of cool starting out is that we can talk to students directly because um, you know if we sell our first two properties and we've got a backlog of 8 10 30 you know um, potential students who want to buy into our company then we can actually go out together and say hey what house are you guys interested and um, but yes Vacancy costs are a real thing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what happens for maintenance? So, so sure. So we operate, I, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. since we're a property management company too, um, essentially we're not going to be the ones going in like fixing stuff. We're going to have contractors, like contractors that we partner with, basically. That if an issue comes up in the house, like a leak or like. I don't know, a window breaks or something like that, then we have like a list of people that we can call, like other, like outsourced companies, and then that would be charged to the tenants. I mean, that's just part of the cost of living there since they own the house. Um, so those kind of things would be charged to the tenants, but. Can you expect them to pay that extra cost? Well, I mean, it's just like, yeah, I mean, it's just like renting a house, renting a house too. I mean, if someone breaks a window in your house, like, you and your roommates have to figure out how you're paying for that. But not a furnace. Not a, well, that's true. So, not a furnace. So here's something that I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to actually ask you guys. So there's the triple net basis where the tenants pay for all maintenance costs, or there's a gross um, basis where we build that into uh, like a monthly fee. And um, the, the issue with the monthly fee is you know, there can be one, two, three months go by without any service or maintenance done to the house, and we're consuming that income, it's coming out of your guys' pockets. On the contrary, if it's a triple net basis, um, the homeowners are more incentivized to take care of their property more. You know, if you break it, you buy it, as opposed to you are already paying for it per month. So how many people would be willing to pay for their own maintenance as a triple net basis, or would they want to, um, yeah, how many people would, would, would they want to pay for their own maintenance? And how about a gross, where you pay it monthly? Like a monthly fee. Regardless. Yeah, Zach? Uh, I think if you worded it as sort of an insurance program, then that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Okay, like an insurance, like a monthly yeah. insurance right, fee, right. sort of? And, and, and okay. you could have, it's, it, it seems viable to have both, where you're like, we can leave it up to you, and mm -hmm. you got to take care of the place. But also, yeah. we have a, a you know a fifty dollar a month insurance plan. Uh, we do all of that. Right. I don't think Make that like an optional. That's how renters insurance works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, sure. I don't think that's cool. Cool. Yeah. I'll talk. Yeah. So like last term property owners have had a conversation. Yeah. Where the what? Last term property owners. Okay. Have yeah. So like anything small that we broke, we fixed it. Mm -hmm. But our basement flooded, and that was just a concern, and they had to fix that. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, yeah. What's up? So, first of all, I thought your presentation was really good. It flowed a lot better. Uh, something that I think you guys should maybe kind of focus on a little bit more is like selling some tickets. And I think that the biggest hurdle is getting tickets, and then that like it just isn't super risky. Right. Because, you know, a lot of parents are gonna be like, oh, I don't want to take on a 
five person mortgage with college students because they're going to trap the house. Right. But like what Chandler was just talking about, I think you guys can sell that. Like, you know, if you don't trash the house and you don't break anything, you're not going to have to. Yeah, totally. Cost, totally. So. Yeah, and that's a big part of the, the marketing too is like freshman orientation. Yeah. That's like a huge opportunity for us to just to, like to talk to parents and to students. Um, because I mean, an 18 year old freshman coming in wouldn't be like, like, oh, like I'm thinking about buying a house. Whereas yeah. like a parents like could see the real value in this. Um, so especially freshman orientations, like that's kind of our prime time, yeah. or like freshman move in too. You know, yeah. like when their parents are there to help them move in, um, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. So, um, what's your plan with, like, so there it said you um, have to divide it up six ways. What about the parking in Boulder, Washington, Tulane, Lenny, and mm -hmm. less than that? Exactly. Plan, yeah. Know? So, ways, so basically, we just know. use this as, like, round numbers for our, like, forecasts. Um, so, I mean, like, we know, like, every property is not a million dollars. Every property doesn't have, like, six residents. But, like, that was kind of an average almost that we used. Um, basically, just to kind of get a, a good forecast. And to kind of get, get like a good idea of, of what we're looking at, um, but like in, in all reality, like it wouldn't look that much different, you know, depending from, on from renting. Yeah, like versus. So um, for example, this house right here on the left, it's a five bedroom house, and they've got seven bedrooms in there in seven different rooms. So technically, we can do, um, we can construct a split interest, divided interest um, contract, however we want, similar to a condo, where basically, okay. You're all splitting the common areas, but you're paying for your own room in the condo. Um, and so basically, we, we would have to sell it as a five bedroom house, but if um, like the space is available for seven bedrooms, like it is currently being rented out for, then we, have, we would have the capacity to do so. Yeah. But zoning law is definitely, I mean, that's, that's definitely a real factor. And like we have, you know, we do consider that and everything, but basically we just use those numbers as round numbers for our forecast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get like kind of clear on your value prop. So like I'm imagining I'm a, a parent of like you know there's a lot of wealthy parents here and they're looking to invest when their kids going through this time. Mm -hmm. What's like kind of the value of them doing some split where they have to deal with four other random kids that their kid just met and four other random parents that their kids just met mm -hmm. as opposed to just like, outright okay. putting down the down payment on one property on their own and then mm -hmm. dealing with renting it. Like I'm trying to figure out. So the biggest thing. More risk, but you also have to pay. You're paying 30k as opposed to 150k down by yourself. You know, it's a way you're splitting. It. So it's yeah. it's affordability, but at that same point, you're exactly right. There's a lot of parents that would have the ability to just say, yeah, let's go put 200k down, or hey, let's go buy a million dollar property. Um, biggest thing that I've learned from experiences, I've had a couple friends do this. And they've just had a hell of a time because they're the property manager too. Yeah. So if they buy that property, they're um, basically they're deciding, okay, what are all my kids' friends going to pay for rent? What am I going to do for property management service? What am I going to do, you know, if the basement floods, et cetera, da 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 da. da. And yeah. the beauty of our platform is we mitigate the risk, we divide it up, um, and we're the property management service. So we provide everything. Yeah, it's that, and I mean, those aren't necessarily the families we're targeting. Like the okay. families we're targeting are sort of like the, not necessarily at like that high income level where they can afford to just buy a house straight up themselves. Yeah. It's more like the people that are like kind of the next lower tier in income down that would basically just be in a position where they could do like a down payment of 30000 or yeah, so. That definitely makes sense. I just wanted mm -hmm. to kind of play devil's advocate. With sure. You guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is your four so your four years is assuming that they'll begin the payments when the student is like a freshman at CU? Yes. Yeah, so our fiscal year starts in August. Um, basically, we just kind of did that because we did it based on the school year. So, yeah, they would be moving in in August, um, and then like their payments would start. As a sophomore. Then. As a sophomore. Three. Yeah. It's based off of three or four years. Three or four years. I, yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. what I was gonna say. Yeah, because a lot of people end up staying for a fifth year and stuff. Yeah, and like a lot of people leave CU after the first year. Exactly. And right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would consider in your website maybe having, if you're gonna keep it exclusively Boulder and targeting CU students, have an education tab mm -hmm. that talks about the market. Oh yeah. What yeah. what Boulder looks like, what the timeline looks like for mm -hmm. a student here, because I knew that that was the hardest thing for me. 
and I had things fall through really last minute and ended mm. up living by myself my sophomore year. And so like having that information yeah. there would be easier for kids to know. You guys start looking in like November. Yeah, and, totally. Like, that's really, actually, that's a so, really like, good idea. You have a timeline and education. Yeah. About that and like, and like about like mortgages and stuff like that and like home ownership. Yeah, and show like totally. Goss Grove, East Campus, The mm -hmm. Hill, like kind of teach yeah, them about totally. this area. Cool. Yeah, Maybe also have a little back year plan yeah well i mean like the three or four year plan is like starting sophomore year so it's like not including I you freshman years out at orientation was actually to yeah you. yeah just to generate interest but everyone's living in the dorms freshman year for the most part so i mean like they really would be moving into their property like sophomore year and they'd be there for three or four years depending on if they stay, if they stay at fifth year Wes? Uh, i think i think uh, if you could specifically target parents of students who have an older relationship that are because when you talk about like educating your market, it's really mm -hmm. expensive. Like if you try to parent that already have kids that went through college and they're paying this, like you don't have to tell them why this is important, right? Right, yeah. So you can like specifically yeah. target them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think there's a challenge to overcome is that like maybe some students could do this, but it might be uncommon for like five friends Best to be friends. able to all do it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might have to like Advertise yeah, on some other types of like room uh, yeah. available websites. Uh, yeah, totally. So maybe making more like strangers, but mm -hmm. yeah. So um, exactly the same thing. Like on our website, um, it's like I said in our last presentation. It's like an ask bid platform similar to Airbnb, where you've got a backlog of people saying, "Okay, yeah, I've got a split interest. I'm willing to sell it," and then people saying, "Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to buy a split interest," and we'll match them up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the number of properties that we manage, like Four Star, I think they manage like 4,000 properties or something like that. So it's like, we have 35. So it's like, it's we're definitely looking at like a much smaller population of students versus like, you know, something like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I, I have to tell you, um, David Kellen presented this the first day of class or the second class that we had. I was thinking, no fucking way is this going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, I'm almost thinking maybe you should have money in. So I think that you've really come a long way in focusing your idea and thinking about actually how it flows. So I would say congratulations. That's really amazing. Thank you. Together, it's been a lot of work, and I know that. Mm -hmm. But I have two questions. Rob raised the first one was the 15%. Um, that really puts a lot more risk on your general partners, though. So in a sense, you're transferring risks to make, make it affordable for your target market, but you're taking out a lot more risk by doing that. I would actually be less, uh, as an investor, I would be uh, less motivated to give you uh, a line of credit on uh, knowing that people are only putting 15% down. You could have a 15% swing in the market. You could have people walking away on these properties, and you're just stuck with a boatload of freaking properties. So that scares the crap out of me. So okay. Cool. Um, I don't think that investors are going to like that very much. So that was mm. um, okay. So second, more, more twenty percent. I think you got to at least do twenty percent. Okay. Um, secondly, how do you how do you qualify these students? So mm. a guy comes in, he gets on his website, he goes, "I'll buy that." He's got fifty bucks in his pocket, mm -hmm. right? So how do you how do you actually yeah. really get that kind of security? Sure. Uh, that you need? So yeah. it's it's through students and their parents. Um, right. So their parents are going to be involved in the process as well. Um, and obviously a lot of parents aren't local, so that would kind of be a matter of like Skyping them in, like talking with them, like making sure they're comfortable and they understand it all. And then um, do like a, like a credit so test or something like that. So for the final presentation, have, have a slide of how we qualify. Okay. It's gonna come up, it's gonna be, it's, it's, in a sense it's addressing the elephant in the room question, how do you, yep. make, how do you uh, make sure these people aren't gonna screw you? Yeah. Um, just address that right now and just mm -hmm. walk through it. So okay. I guess the direct answer is, we're already renting right now in Boulder, and in order to rent, our parents had to be qualified for us to be yeah. uh, to be able to rent. And so at that same point, we're going to use the same process. It's a different, it's it's a different, different deal, though, right? Yeah. I mean, if you have, if you have four, five, 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 six people in a home, five people end up holding a bag of one person, but it could, just, it could just get messy. So just as long as you understand sure. what that process is and can spell it out, um, I think it will really help you, though. Cool. Cool. All right. Nice job. Thanks. I will take 15 minutes, I'll set up.